if you can maximize this, you're going to 10x your productivity, your alphaness, your wokeness, uh, <laughs> and just you name it. You're going to you're going to multi x. Exercise daily, that's number four, all right? But just don't do it three, two to three hours before bed. I recommend lifting heavy things, but that doesn't have to be every day's workout. Sometimes your workout's just a stroll or a walk or some stretches, but get movement every single day, all right? It evens out your hormones, it evens, it evens out your body chemistry, and it helps you sleep at night, all right? Be conscious of stimulants. I'm not against stimulants. I, I drink a lot of stimulants and I'm not very sensitive to caffeine. So some people though are very sensitive to caffeine. So notice that I can have a cup of coffee at night and go to sleep and that doesn't really seem to affect me. I mean, I shouldn't probably, I probably shouldn't do that, but I mean, I've done it and it doesn't seem to bother me. Uh, but some people they're up all night. So just pay attention to you and your uh, body, how it responds to stimulants and, and keep in mind, if, especially if you're caffeine sensitive, it takes about eight hours for caffeine to wear off. So if you're going to bed, let's say at midnight or 11 o'clock, you want to make sure you're not having any caffeine eight hours prior to that. All right. Number six, no alcohol before bed. All right. Alcohol suppresses growth hormone before bed. So three hours before bed, try not to drink anything. If you had a drink to two drinks, depending on your body weight, it might not be effect that, that affecting. But if you're regularly drinking a half a bottle or a bottle of wine a night and then going to bed an hour later, I know it's a depressant and it makes you sleepy, makes you tired. Hey, there was a time after deployments where I was doing a few shots of whiskey right before bed because it depressed. It, it was that depressant effect. Let me go to sleep but it wasn't a good way to do it, all right? Because it suppresses growth hormone and it suppresses your ability to recover your body at night. And so therefore it, requests, it suppresses the actual quality of sleep you're getting for repair, both mentally and physically because of the alcohol, all right? So you might fall asleep, but your actual quality of sleep is now greatly compromised. So keep that in mind about alcohol and cut that down. All right, to nothing before bed within a few hours. Number seven, no large meals or excessive fluids a couple hours before bed. All right, eating before bed's fine. You're not going to get fat. It's all, it's, it's calories in versus energy expenditure. All right, it's not like, that's not the issue. But the, the issue is just a large meal sitting on your stomach and causing your digestive system to work harder than it, it it should will affect the quality of your sleep. And excessive fluids too, although you wanna be hydrated, too much where you're having to wake up to go to the bathroom in a few hours, that's gonna interrupt your sleep. So be mindful of those things. Um, number eight, uh, be, be mindful of pharmaceuticals that would affect your sleep, okay? So if you're taking any kind of medications, just be mindful that all anything you put in your body affects your sleep in some way. And so pay attention to that stuff and make the adjustments for it, okay? And don't take things that aren't gonna be good for your sleep. If, if one of the side effects of something you're taking is, it's, is it messes your sleep up, you want, might wanna rethink that because your sleep is probably more important, okay? And you might wanna see if you can take some, an alternative that won't have that same side effect. Um, it's up to you, of course, talk to your doctor, right? Now, number nine, no, again, I mentioned, mentioned about naps, but I'll mention it again. And really what I wanna hit on more though is using non-sleep deep rest. So this doesn't mean burying yourself in your phone and scrolling Facebook for 10 minutes, by the way, because social media and screens are designed to hit your dopamine center centers in small little minute ways that keeps you scrolling so you're not actually resting in your brain when you're scrolling through stuff and you're surfing the net and you're surfing youtube i mean just put it on my channel and put it play right and that's it that's all you need i'm <laughs> obviously I'm joking around but okay when you're on electronics that's hitting dopamine centers so non-sleep deep rest or resting your brain is not happening when you're on electronics, OK? 
Okay, so keep that in mind. When you take your breaks, sometimes throughout the day, you're going to notice a huge difference. If you put your electronics away, shut your eyes, maybe put on some quiet, focus music or chill music or binaural beats, set maybe your timer on your phone for 10 minutes and just shut your eyes and let your brain zone out. Okay, that's basically meditation. Okay, breathe deep, shut your eyes for 10 and just zone, get in the zone. All right, don't pull a Joe Biden and do it in the middle of an interview or something important. Okay, but do it <laughs> in between stuff, right? You're going to notice your focus and your willpower and all kinds of stuff happens for you in a really good way. All right, that's that non sleep deep rest, it's called getting into a rested state and resting your mind. That's really good. That is a recharge, five minutes, 10 minutes, even 15 or 20 recharges you like no nobody's business. So give it a try. Instead of trying to take a nap or laying down somewhere and scrolling and keeping your mind going and awake, all right? Those, those things will help you. Um, and it'll help you relax and sleep later if you're taking those breaks, all right? Number 10, relax before one hour before bed. So you need to be reducing your screen time and pay, pay attention to light. I, 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 you watch some TV or you're on screens before bed. I sure am. Okay. I, I know I am, but I mean, I, I use, you know, you can use blue blockers and stuff and keep the light reduced in the room. So lights are going to signal your body for sleep. And if you have trouble sleeping, consider reducing your lights. Okay. And, and that means reduce your overhead lights. So get rid of your overhead lights after eight, nine o'clock and keep all your lights. Candle lights are excellent. Any kind of fire that actually doesn't stimulate the brain to be in a wakeful state like sunlight or your fluorescent lights or your electronic lights. So candlelight without burning anything down, obviously, and keeping lights low too. your retina has is designed to pick up light at an upward angle and it signals wakefulness. They've done that. That's something that has to do with the sensitivity of our retinas. And so when you, lights are, if you have lights on, have lamps and things that are waist down. Okay. So you're, you're the lights coming from down here versus up here. That actually is going to help you quite a bit with getting your mind and your brain and your body ready for restfulness in the evening. So pay attention to those things, okay? Um, I don't sleep with the TV on or leaving the light of your phone phone on or computer on, Make sure, at least when it's time for sleep, make sure that stuff is shut off, all right? A hot bath or a hot shower before bed. So temperature, body temperature has a lot to do with signaling for sleep. Your body actually needs to drop in temperature a little bit for you to comfortably fall asleep. Now, when you give yourself a hot bath or hot shower before bed, what happens is the hot water will actually cause your body temperature to in your core temperature inside to drop to compensate for the heat on the outside. And so a nice relaxing hot bath, hot shower relaxes you and then your temperature, your core temperature drops, which preps you for being ready to, for sleeping. And so hot baths, hot showers before bed helps you sleep. I like cold showers or cold water in the morning, okay, for, for I do, I jump in a lake until the damn thing freezes. So cold water in the morning is great for your body, does have health benefits, and it has wakefulness benefits, but hot water at night will help you with your sleeping okay versus a cold cold shower at night now your body your core temperature comes up and you're awake <laughs> all right okay so let's say you're lying in bed and you can't sleep or you've gone to sleep you've woken up and you can't get back to sleep so if that happens to you don't lie in bed for more than 20 minutes if you can't sleep okay so if you can't sleep and you're struggling with it, it you want to get up now, it doesn't mean you're going to do a ton of activity, but go sit at a desk or sit someplace and do something like reading is pretty good or notes or whatever, 
reading is is really good because reading is probably the best thing I find because it's passive, you know, versus getting your mind active. So passive reading is is really good if you can't sleep, but get out of the bed to do it. All right. So if you're sitting up and you're reading, what happens is your body will tire faster and then you'll fall asleep. You'll you'll want to go lay back down and fall asleep faster. Or if you're lying in bed and then you're just reading, a lot of times you'll prolong your wakefulness, which is not what you're trying to do, right? You're trying to get back to sleep. Um, so here's a little trick that I found, which works really well. Okay. That's not a published thing everywhere, but there's some things published on it actually, but it's not a, it's not a big recommendation for a lot of the experts, but it's my recommendation because it does work really well, which is binaural beats. Okay. So you just put it on as a back background noise or a, a, a kind of a white noise in the background is the binaural beats. And what I'm looking for is Delta brain waves or sleep brain waves, sleep waves, something like that. Okay. There's tons of free videos on YouTube that are eight to, to 11 hours long, and you can just let it play on your phone or your computer, low volume screen off in the background while you sleep. My sleep quality is tremendous when I play this in the background because what it is is it audially stimulates brain waves that are the delta waves. And so when you're awake and wanting to be awake, having trouble sleeping, you're in a usually a beta brainwave state. So your brain waves are a higher and more alert state. And we need to bring that stuff down into a sleep state you know, from alpha to theta, and then delta is your deep sleep. So by having those delta waves, audio waves stimulate your brain, it's, it, it stimulates your brain to, to lower those brainwave levels and to get into more of a restful state and to be able to stay that way. My sleep quality, I notice, is tremendously better with just playing binaural beats in the background because it's the brain wave stimulating those delta waves. It, it, it helps keep me asleep and it makes my deep sleep much more quality and if your deep sleep's a higher quality then your REM sleep and your other cycles will be a higher quality as well usually okay now, as far as any supplements to take um the best supplement i can recommend without you know without any negative uh, consequences or side effects uh, associated is zma okay that's your zinc magnesium uh, aspartate all right it's an old bodybuilder supplement but it's great for sleeping. It works because you need sleep to recover from workouts. And, you know, you take ZMA fuel right before bed. You can get the cheap stuff. Not, it's not, it doesn't have to be expensive, but is that zinc magnesium aspartate is a good supplement. That's going to help you, you know, help you get a good quality of sleep. All right. That nutrient seems to help. Um, there's other stuff and supplements out there, but I think ZMA is the best bang for your buck. And I guess, you know, for the video, that's what I'm going to recommend. All right. If you guys have anything else, you can put them in the comments, but take that stuff with a grain of salt. No offense to anyone putting things in the comments, but there's a lot of things that are being sold to you out there, right. That are not going to be effective necessarily. They're just for sale. <laughs> okay. So, you know, before you go spending your money and buying a bunch of stuff and getting the latest mattress or goofy pillow or goofy supplement, whatever, and certainly don't take any sleep spill pills. I mean, so that's my last recommendation is do not get into ambient or any of that stuff because it'll make it, it, there's so many bad side effects to those things. They were handing those ambient out like candy to soldiers on deployments and afterwards, and I'm pretty sure they still do. And it's a really a bad choice because you become sleep dependent on those drugs and those drugs do not help your brain get the rest that it needs. So you start running into other mental health issues because you're not getting the brain rested like it should, you should get rested. So all, every point I gave you here is a hundred percent effective on improving your sleep. All right. So everything I gave you here is a point. It's free. It's something you can execute, and it is it it works. All everything I mentioned here is something that works to improve your sleep. It's not theoretical. All right, that the research has been done. 
these are the things that definitely work. And so really, you just need to make this more of a priority in your life. I know a lot of you guys are chilling it and being productive and, you know, maybe spinning a bunch of girls and going on dates every night. And you're living that hard life where you sleep in five hours a night. Yeah, yeah, I get it. But I think you need to improve that because the quality of what you're doing day in and day out, the quality of your mental and physical health will improve greatly, all right, by the sleep. And I'm telling you, if you are not getting it, if you're hitting the gym and trying to hit the hit the world and, and make that dent in the universe, but you're not sleeping, you're doing yourself a huge disservice, all right? So I'm not going to get into that speech again, but this is a major, crucial, critical impo- component. Sleep is not really the most exciting topic, so I won't be doing it very often. So just take this video for what it is, share it with your friends, save it to your favorites, okay? Do what you got to do to keep this around because you're going to want to come back to the sleep issue anytime that it's not being prioritized. I'm telling you, it's going to be a major thing for your mental health and well-being and your physical health and well-being uh, going for it for your whole life. All right. So thanks again for tuning in. Take it serious. Take the sleep thing serious. If now after all this, if you're still having trouble and you're having trouble sleeping, then there could be some things going on mental health wise, mental fitness wise that we can fix through some neuro behavioral reconditioning that we might need to do like in a session with me. So book a session. If your sleep is still screwed up after taking all of these steps and you can't shut this brain off, okay, we can do some techniques and some things, some sleep hypnosis some health self hypnosis i can teach you in session to get yourself wound down and back to sleep maybe some emdr if there's some things that are weighing on your brain that you just can't seem to shut off problems you need to solve but you can't seem to get them out of your head things like that if that's what's keeping you awake and all of these steps aren't working then you need to schedule and book a session with me and we can solve that problem because your sleep is way too important and way too critical for your success and that's in every aspect of your life